Space travel is one of the things that make humans great. But, have you ever thought about what it really takes to make it? Here are five important things that you need to know if you've ever wanted to try out a space journey, or if you want to become an astronaut. Hello and welcome to One Away. Before we proceed, please leave us a thumbs up if you like the video, and hit that subscribe button to get the latest videos we put out. The Heart of Human Spaceflight Although, exploring outer space is a dream for many, it always carries a high percentage of risk. There are risks in training as an astronaut, and there are risks in operating a rocket launch. And, there are risks in orbiting around the Earth, and exploring other planets. But, as Chris Hadfield would often point out, that knowledge can help you overcome the fear and increase the likelihood of success. This calm under pressure mindset, was also what made Apollo 11's crew great pilots. They were not just adept technically, but they were able to control their emotions. John Glenn once orbited around the Earth for more than a day and yet, his heart rate never became erratic. While it takes advanced technology, and technical knowledge to start an exploration project, it takes a strong mindset to finish the project. Astronaut Training Many astronauts in training, actually tend to fall within their mid-30s to early 40s. Though, there are exceptions, it often means that many undergo astronaut training, and leaving behind their other careers or jobs. When in training, candidates also, experience extensive hours of lessons and trials, as well as traveling to other areas. Although this may surprise people, some organization requires a candidate, to ideally have a science degree, or, years of experience in a related field, preferably as a pilot. These skills are important for the technical portion of the job. But, apart from that, many agencies require that candidates are physically fit. This is because astronaut training is quite rigorous, and lack of fitness has caused much harm. Any additional subset of skills like, wilderness survival, and underwater exploration, as well as leadership and organization, is also recommended. This subset of skills, helps to deal with issues like, lack of nourishment and lung capacity. This also includes a facility for communicating in many languages, especially Russian. As space technology improves, a collection of all these skills, and requirements are most likely necessary for each candidate. Most astronauts, especially new candidates, spend only a fraction of the time in space. Most of this time, is spent on training, usually for two years, and acting as support control for those on a mission. Some of that training involves many kinds of simulations. Learning to walk in space, usually from submersion training in swimming pools. Flying an airplane robotic operations, space station duties, and, again, learning Russian. Despite all that, many candidates do not make the cut. But, the few who do, actually forge bonds and partnerships with their crew, similar to those in a well-knit military. Interestingly, many who have passed, or have undergone the training, use these skills in other careers like, the research and development, military service, or other exploration ventures. The importance of rocket propulsion. Aside from the space shuttles, used to orbit around space, rockets are cylinders, that help to propel these objects for liftoff. There is, of course, the propulsion system, which makes up most of the rocket. It is comprised of the fuel, oxidizer, pumps, combustion chamber, throat, nozzle, exit, and exhaust. The system, helps to launch the vessel from the ground, and helps to direct the vessel in a particular direction. Then, there is the guidance system, which is made of up several radar, and communication tools, as well as sophisticated computers and sensors. This system helps to keep the vessel's intended trajectory, and destination. Finally, there is a system called the payload, which, is a carrier for different items like a spacecraft, cargo and supplies, and others. As important, as the other two systems are, it's the propulsion system that makes combustion happen and passes it through the nozzle. As the exhausts from combustion go down, it causes a force reaction from the ground. This gives the rocket, enough force to create an uplift, helping to send it out to the atmosphere. Circling around orbital mechanics. One of the most difficult, make or break parts of an astronaut's job is the flight control, around orbits. This, is because a space shuttle operates, and navigates through the atmosphere to the stratosphere, all leading to the thermosphere. This is one reason, why many astronauts paradoxically feel both, the coldness of space, and heat coming from other areas. This, is not the same as, the environment of an airplane, where it mostly navigates, and operates in the lowest part of the atmosphere, 
that is the closest to Earth, the troposphere. The goal of a space shuttle launch, is to make an orbital inclination, this is the highest point of latitude, you can get in your orbital ground track, which is latitude relative to the equator. The big challenge, is overcoming maximum dynamic pressure, which is a combination of, vehicle speed, and the thickness of the atmosphere. After launch, the shuttle is throttled down, in order to reduce immediate pressure, and then throttled back up again. Thankfully, the main computer does most of this, except when in emergency circumstances. When in orbit, there are two designations to keep track of, in order to circle around the orbit. Perigee, which is the orbit point closest to the Earth. And, Apogee, which is the farthest point from the Earth. Some astronauts point out, that, the most fuel-efficient orbit circularization is the Apogee. The higher you go, and the farther, the slower the shuttle, mostly from the environment of space. As part of, re-entry to Earth, you usually have to shift your orbital velocity, by a couple of hundred miles per hour. You point the direction backward, instead of forward, then fire the engines to slow it down, as the rest of the velocity is removed, from the vessel with the atmosphere's friction via heat. There's actually a space simulation program called, Kirby Space Program, and it's gotten a bit of buzz, thanks to its multi-genre game mechanics. Some astronauts have actually suggested, that it's a good program, for testing a pilot's understanding of orbital mechanics, and some even suggested it to NASA. Interested? Why not try it out? Exploring the unknown. Through many science fiction movies, audiences, have been interested in life outside of Earth. With space exploration, this has become a close reality. But, up until the landing of Mars, many exploits to the far reaches of space have been a speculation. Most of the work, has been figuring out better, and better tools, and pilot training usually centered on satellite, and orbits around the atmosphere. Although, this tinkering takes many years to satisfactorily complete, it is a smart move. As with underwater exploration, which is another field that has been left, 95% unexplored, journey into the frontiers of space, needs ample time. The plan, for many space stations, has been to thoroughly investigate Mars again, and with some opting to take it further. Regardless of the destination, the willingness to explore the unknowns in outer space, is something humanity has vested interest in.